How's it going, you guys? Lynx Forte here to bring you my week 10 team build for the P4G, the Pokemon 4 Glory. And this week, we are finally, because people were asking in the beginning of the season, when do you play Dan? When do you play A Drive? Well, week 10 is here and we play A Drive. And honestly, this is a battle I'm really excited for. for. Um, Dan has been. I, I think, in my opinion, Dan is probably one of the best role models there is in the Pokemon community. And. I'm just so excited to play him just being uh, the great battler that he is and just being the awesome person that he is. So this is a, a battle I have indeed been looking for for a while. Um, I've always wanted the chance to play him just, you know, to for myself to say, hey, I play Dan, win or lose. I'm pretty sure I will have fun. <laughs> so, but um, enough of that. Let's look at his team really quick. It's really powerful. He's seven and two on the season. He's made some transactions through the season, so he's been able to continue like the dominance. He's not like psych or I'm sorry, not psycho. Um, FX was number one in the league last week. Well, Dan is number one in the week in the league this week. So we get to take on the number one person yet again. Um, so take a look at his team really quick. It's Tapu Koko, Latias, Mega Beedrill, Donphan, Diggersby, Bronzong, Umbreon, Primarina, Gorgeist, and Prim Primate and Moltres. Uh, the one big thing that I noticed about his team was that there was an ice weakness that I was hoping to exploit. Um, Latias, Donphan, Bronzong, and Gorgeist. If you want to throw Primarina in there because of Freeze Dry on Mega Glalie, go ahead. But that was something I really wanted to exploit. Um, but the issue with his team is that it hits stupidly hard. So it was kind of hard to try and figure out what walls that I want I wanted to bring or how I wanted to figure out how to play around them. Um, Tapu Koko is also a monster just because you don't know whether or not it's going to run physical or special because it can technically do both really well. Um, what else? Moltres is his Omni Z move user, so I have to be on the lookout for Z Sunny Day. Um, Mega Beedrill really hard hitter as well um i think i have a way to play around his team whether or not it comes into fruition in the battle has yet to be seen and we will figure that out but let's take a look at the team that i am bringing for this week like i said he has an ice weakness so first up i am bringing mega glalie uh with super fang frustration ice shard and dark pulse um basically frustration was like my best move to hit anything with like if, you know I think Moltres can come in on it, but it still gets hit decently hard. Um, Latias, he may he may opt to go like offensive Latias this week. I don't know. Uh, I feel like Latias might be like a offensive Pokemon with like Defog. So we'll have to see about that. But um, I have Super Fang on it because Bronzong switches in like 100% of the time. And my only way to try to get around Bronzong is to is to hit super fang and then maybe try and dark pulse it one or two times i think dark pulse depending on his ev spread does like 33 percent max i can't remember which ev spread it was i can't remember if it was defensive or physically defensive or especially defensive but at best case scenario dark pulse does like i think 33 percent just because that's the one i remember <laughs> so you know maybe if he's like fizz def or something i go super fang dark pulse twice but he has umbreon back there which you know I can't remember the calc on that one, but hopefully Super Fang plus Frustration does take it out. But uh, that's my hope for, you know, all of that. I, I shard, obviously, just priority because it needs to be priority. Next up, we're bringing uh, Sylveon, Choice Vex, Hyper Voice, Psy Shock, Shadow Ball, Baton Pass. Baton Pass just for, you know, momentum switches. Um, maybe if I can predict a double. Maybe if he shows his hand in what may be... Um, Sylveon switch ins I can try and figure out after but the reason why I decided to run choice specs um, because if I ran like just defensive Sylveon it doesn't even do half a hyper voice doesn't even do half to Umbreon so I was like you know what if I'm gonna put any kind of offensive investment into it I might as well just go all out and hit everything as hard as I possibly can um, if he wants to try and switch in Mega B well, I have Psy Shock for that, and I think that O code. If not, it was like really close. And then Shadow Ball for um, Bronzong as well. So you know, I think Bronzong is going to be the Pokemon that he leans on the heaviest 
to switch into Mega Glalie and Sylveon, which is kind of what I wanted, which is why I decided to bring both of those. Um, that kind of takes the pressure off of the rest of my team for that. Next up, I am bringing Electivire, <laughs> uh, Power Punch, Thunder Punch, Ice Punch, and EQ. Again, Ice Weakness is why I'm running uh, Ice Punch. The Assault Vest with the EV spread, the, um, the 20 Spadef, and then the 4 in the HP allows me to basically wall Tapu Koko. Um, Tapu Koko, like an HP ground Tapu Koko, does not 4 hit KO me. I mean, maybe maybe Choice Specs did. Or, wait, sorry, sorry. <laughs> HP ground Tapu Koko, it needs 4 hits on me to take me out. So that being said, like I think maybe Choice Specs would do a little bit better, but I mean, I can basically come in on Tapu Koko a lot. Well, I come in on top of Coco like a couple times because, like, if he has HP ground, that is. But I really don't think he's gonna bring top of Coco just because of the Pokemon that I have on my team to try and beat it. But at the same time, top of Coco could be a good bring because of the Pokemon I have on my team, if that makes any sense. <laughs> but um, that was one of my fears. Like, you know, he brings top of Coco, so I wanted to make sure I had a way to play around it. But it, there's a good chance that he does bring like HP ground on top of Coco. Um, and I kind of want to scout for that, but um, Electivire will be my way to do that. And with this speed investment, I still outspeed Moltres. So that was the reason for that. And that's the reason why I really didn't want to take any like EVs away from anything else other than speed. As long as I'm still spe speeding, outspeeding Moltres, I'm fine. Um, there's a chance he runs like Scarf Diggersby this week because it kind of seems good, but I'm not sure 100%. But We'll see what happens. Next up, I am bringing uh, Needle King, Choice Scarf, Stealth Rock, Ice Beam, Sludge Wave, Focus Blast. Um, I was talking this over with Biddle, and he was actually the one that suggested this set. Like we tweaked it a little bit, but he suggested this one. Um, Timid plus 132. I outspeed everything on his team. Um, maybe I don't outspeed Beedrill. I can't remember. Maybe I do outspeed Beedrill. I don't remember, <laughs> but I made sure to outspeed what I need to outspeed. Um, Tapu Koko is obviously scared out by this just for the threat of Sludge Wave. Stealth Rock because I need rocks up on the field. If he doesn't bring Defog and Latias, or he doesn't bring um, Dawn Fan with Rapid Spin, rocks are going to be huge. Because it keeps Moltres at bay if he brings Moltres. Like if he doesn't bring Moltres, there's possibility he doesn't bring like a Hazard Remover. Because I think he can work around it with Beedrill. Um, that would just be insane if he brought Defog Beedrill as well. So. Um, but yeah, the rest of the EVs are just for bulk and the special attack. So, next up, I am bringing Kecleon with an Assault Vest as well. Fake Out, Rock Slide, Drain Punch, Sucker Punch. Um, this EV spread allows me to live a Jolly Life Orb uh, return from Diggersby. And if he's adamant Life Orb, it does a max of like 101%. Or 101. So I, I have a, like a 12% chance to live that hit from full. And then I hit him with a Drain Punch. And then Drain Punch plus Sucker Punch has a chance to kill. Like it is a really good chance to kill. Hold on a second. Or maybe it's like 50 50. But it is a chance to kill. So the reason why I decided to run that. Um, and then I can also switch into, if I need to, I can switch into Moltres and possibly scare it out with like a Rock Slide. I, I click Fake Out to see if he wants to stay in. And then, and hopefully don't get burned by Flame Body. I think Moltres gets Flame Body. Don't quote me on that. I feel like it does because I think he that he did that to Nate. Or he did that to somebody earlier. Maybe it was Crimson. But I feel like something got hit with the Moltres Flame Body. I don't remember though. Um, but yeah. So fake out Rock Slide. You know, fake out to see if Moltres wants to stay in. And then I live the hit. Rock Slide um, to take it out the next turn, depending. And last but not least... Coming back for the first time in like four weeks is Celesteela holding the Aka Berry, Toxic EQ, Seed Bomb, and Rock Slide. Kind of like a bait for uh, Moltres. Like if I haven't taken any damage or, you know, I've gotten like maybe a, a Beast Boost to my Spadef, I can take, you know, the Fire Blast, the Flamethrower, plus the Aka Berry, and then hopefully not miss the Rock Slide and kill. <laughs> If you guys couldn't tell, like Moltres was a problem for me. Every time I would calc something, Moltres just about one hit, one shot, like one shot it. So that was like my whole plan. Like between 
Like, really, it was just Moltres. And then maybe his defensive core, like Bronzong and Umbreon, but I still tried to prep for everything. Like, mm, I don't know. We'll see. Like, Donphan, he hasn't brought since he's picked it up. So, I don't know if he'll bring it or not. And um, let me see. What else? Primate, he hasn't brought since he picked it up. Gore guys, he brought one time, but I don't know if it comes in this battle. I don't know if it has the best matchup. But um, Latias, Bronzong, and Primarina, he's brought to every single battle. So I'm kind of expecting to see those three. Um, Tapu Koko is still a coin toss. Diggersby, I expect to see. Umbreon, I expect to see. Moltres, I expect to see. So I mean, so Latias, Bronzong, Primarina, Moltres, uh, Mega B. And Umbreon, oh man, there's there's a lot he could bring. There's a lot he could bring. <laughs> but we'll see what happens in the battle. Anyway, you guys, thank you guys so much for watching. And we'll see you tomorrow. This is Link's Forte. I'm out. Peace.